Hello everyone, this is Matt with 2 Direct, and today I'm going to show some ins and outs in programming the Motorola BPR40, or MAG1 as they call it. First release date of this radio was March of 2006, so it's been around for quite some time, uh, over 14 years. Today I have pulled up a sample archive. We can see from the frequencies that this is in fact a UHF radio. Down here we've got the frequency range. Uh, 450 to 470 megahertz so we can manually type in any frequency within that range in the selected fields here but let's go ahead and start at the top here and just go through the available menu tabs here so if we click on file we can open a stored file we can save the current one I can print out my frequencies or I can exit the program next here under device we can either read or write the radio you can see there's a, a shortcut if you do control r for read or you can do a control w for write com port very important here i'm currently using a usb cable typically when you plug in the cable your pc is going to automatically detect that cable and install the drivers for it a lot of times you'll have to go into your device manager and see what com port that's been assigned to and then manually select it in this field here in this case, I'm on COM3. Every PC is a little bit different with regard to that. I believe we're running uh, Windows 10 on this machine. So be aware of this. If you're unable to read or write a radio, I always come to the COM port here first. Go into your device manager. Check all that out. Typically, there'll be a error message of some sort. Maybe a little, I think it's a, like a yellow triangle with an exclamation point. So COM port, very important here. And then help, help topics. You can look things up. And then these are basically icons are shortcuts for what we just went through. So this is a file for open. You can save it through this right here. We can read the radio, write it right here. We can do the print, uh, print preview and print. And then again, the help file. So those are the tabs, pretty self-explanatory. We can see since this is an entry level analog radio, it's a pretty stripped down software. This radio was released to compete with a lot of the lower cost competition back in the mid 2000s, but radio is still available, um, going strong. And if you just need kind of a meat and potatoes, a stripped down analog radio, then good option for you here. So there's two tabs here. We've got our conventional personality, which means our frequencies. So we've got our receive data, our transmit data, and then options over here, which I'll cover a little bit later. If I click on the other tab, this is radio configuration. This is where we do a lot of the internal settings on the radio. Down here, uh, programmable buttons. There are two option buttons on the side of the radio, and you can program those with a short press or a long press. You have four options there. Typically, we will set these to unassigned. Most of our customers don't want to utilize any of those features. Uh, some of them are a little antiquated and older, and it's just not practical for everyday use. If it's a uh, a busy casino, hotel, something like that. They don't have time uh, to use a lot of this and they don't want to inadvertently press a button and mess something up with the radio. So typically we leave these unassigned. Most common feature we would program here would be a uh, scan. Go down in here and select the uh, appropriate button for scan, programmable button number two. So we click scan here. This is a short press and then over here we would build the scan list. So these are our available channels and then I can add these into the scan list. So if I wanna scan the first five channels, I would do so here. Up here, talkback scan enable. This is a really useful feature. I recommend always using this if you're gonna utilize scan. Let's say for instance, I'm a manager and I'm talking on channel one here but channel 5 is active. So if I'm scanning, even though I'm on channel 1, I'm going to start receiving all the voice traffic from channel 5. And all I have to do is hit my push to talk button. Even though I'm on channel 1 here, since we checked that box for talk back enable, my radio is automatically going to allow me to transmit on channel 5 and communicate with those folks. So very useful. Otherwise, I'd have to crank the dial on the top of the radio from channel 1 all the way to 5 to respond. So I do recommend clicking this talk back scan enable here. Very important feature. Other than that, quick key override enable. I don't recommend using that. I don't think I've ever seen a customer request that. And lastly here, battery save mode enable. I 
really recommend deselecting this. This will cause the radio to go into a sleep mode if it sits for I think it's a pretty short duration, around 15 minutes. And if the radio does receive a transmission, it usually cuts off about a half second of that transmission. So really don't like that. When these radios first came out in 2006, that was a huge request so that we take that off. So don't really want to utilize that. It doesn't save much battery. If you're practicing good radio health and, and charging batteries and taking care of them, you should, really shouldn't worry about any of that. Over here, just more settings for scan. For normal scan, we can select the duration of the scan as well as hang time. That's how long I have to respond over here, you know, if I'm on that different channel in order to respond back. So this is in milliseconds, so that'd be three 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds. I think my math is correct there. Timeout timer, you can select the duration there. Timing out call. User-defined PL tones. If you're pairing these radios with radios that are not Motorola's, they might be some PL tones in there that aren't in the predefined list here for the BPR40, so you can manually type it in here, and then that allows you to select it. So very, very useful here. This is a very old version of the software. I think we're up to version three now, but just an old file that we had. Model number here, so this is gonna give us the model number of the radio. We know an R typically signifies UHF, so we know this is a UHF eight channel BPR40. So if we go back to the conventional personality tab, we can see all our frequency information now. So I can at will type in any frequency I'd like here. So if I type in 465 and hit tab, it'll auto populate all of the zeros. PL tones, if I click that button, it's gonna open up a chart that we can fill out. It's opening up on my other screen. In that list, I can select from DPLs, TPLs, inverted DPLs, and then three types of, of TPLs. And that's where we can select the user defined as well. So I'll put up a, um, a screenshot of this chart so you can go off of it. Within there is where you would select these fields here. A reminder, uh, you should really always be using this. It's just gonna help you have clear transmissions and, and block out anyone in the area if they're coming through. So now that I've typed in my frequency here, I've got my DPL of 043. My squelch, if I double click in here, I can go from tight to normal. I recommend staying on normal if you're concerned about coverage. Mute, standard muting, unmuting, and then we could do number three, which looks like a combination. I usually leave it on number one here. And then the next field over here is gonna be our transmit frequency. So if we're in simplex, we're going radio to radio. We wanna make sure these match. The software doesn't copy it over to the other side of the chart like some of the other ones do, so you have to manually type it in there. PL, DPL matches, so we know that's good. Our power is set to high, so we're gonna be at four watts. We can go to low power by double clicking here if needed. That does save a lot of battery. And I think we can select an option button to toggle between that as well. So we can always do that. Over here, this is a uh, feature to turn off your DPL, enable, disable. So we can click in here for on and off. Receive only if we just wanted the employer to use the radio to just receive transmissions and not be able to transmit back. We would click in here on off. Reverse burst, this is only utilized for uh, a TPL. So these last two frequencies, seven and eight, we can see we have a TPL, which is always a decimal. And reverse burst, in my layman's terms, what that's going to do is it's going to eliminate a lot of that squelch tail that you might hear at the end of uh, radio transmission. You know, there's always a little bit of static in analog. It's gonna quell that and uh, eliminate a lot of that. So you can imagine if you're hearing that all day with an earpiece, it's, it's quite annoying. So I typically will put a reverse burst in there. I think you can select between 180 and 240 for that. I think I've always had better luck with 180, but I've kind of just you know messed around with that hit and miss. BCLO, full disclosure, I've never used that and not sure what that is. We can look it up in the help file and see what that might be. I've never enabled this. Band, this is an older software, so you had the ability to choose between 12 and half and 25 kilohertz. As we know, we can't run on 25 kilohertz in the States anymore. Newer software, this is grayed out. The only option you can do is 12 and a half. Talk round over here, you can set that if you're using a repeater uh, to bypass that, but it's grayed out since we have simplex frequencies here. So those are your options on the radio. Other than that, over here in this field, if you'd like to password protect the radio, you can enter it here. 
It's a read password. Just make sure you remember that, otherwise you'd have to uh, erase your radio. Looks like it has to be eight characters and it tells you down there. But these are the basics of the BPR40s. If I want to eliminate channels, all I have to do is just clear out these fields at the bottom. So if we wanted to eliminate channel 8, I would just pull the frequencies out of there and that's no longer going to function. It's not like some of the other softwares where you can do double click on these numbers and it'll gray it out. You actually have to go in there and delete the frequencies. So that's the MAG1 BPR40 software in a nutshell. So if you have any questions about programming, uh, we're happy to help you out. You can reach us at 888-742-5893 or sales at 2 and we're happy to uh, help you out with any of the, the programming. If you send in your radios, we can match up MAG1s with all the other popular brands out there. So it's as we can see, it's just matching up data. So as long as that's all in line, everything will work seamlessly. So again, give us a call today, and we're happy to help out. Thank you.